Fan fiction is one of the most amazing things that has ever happened to me in my late teens. I learned lots of things, connected with the community and decided writing wasn't bad after all, that I could actually dedicate the rest of my life to this thing. But when I finally decided to move from fan fiction and on to writing what would become my first book ever, I approached it like I was writing fan fiction. Almost 10 years later, I can only see how that hindered me. Writing seriously isn't like writing fan fiction, and the sooner that is understood, the better. My worst mistake was taking feedback only from my family members. The old saying goes, don't mix business with family. I would like to rephrase that as, don't mix feedback with family. It tends to get jumbled. Writing fan fiction has put me in the habit of seeking feedback for every little thing I wrote, which on itself is not bad, but I only took feedback from my family members. Three or four paragraphs? No worries. Let's show it to my brother so he can tell me how awesome it is. And of course, why wouldn't I? I used to do this before, whenever I wrote a paragraph, I would post it to fanfiction.com and read what people thought of it, and my brother didn't hesitate either. He always told me how good it was, that I was getting better, rarely ever giving me a healthy dose of constructive feedback on what was actually missing. Maybe your family is different, maybe they can actually give you good feedback, but I made the mistake of assuming the only feedback I needed was from my family members. I could have sought help from the writing community, whether over at Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook. However, I just locked myself with my family and ended it there. If instead I had come out to the wider writing community, I would have improved at a much quicker pace. Then they were treating the reader like they were not capable. You see, my writing was not just littered with blunt, obvious exposition paragraphs, but at times entire chapters were just info dumps I thought the reader needed to understand my so, so complicated story. This mentality of hand-holding the reader, as well as repeatedly utilizing info dumps, was rampant in my fanfiction. And so when I moved to writing what would become my first manuscript ever, it moved with me. My attitude that readers needed hand-holding wasn't true at all. Readers are exceptionally smart, and they can easily put together two pieces of information. Further, they can read a whole book without getting confused, unless the information is not properly communicated. And that's the key word, honestly if not properly communicated. So instead of avoiding info dumps, I would not only info dump, but I would constantly repeat the same information just a chapter later. That was made worse with the lack of proper and efficient wording for the information. So not only did I info dump, as well as repeat the same information, I was also plagued by poor word choice that introduced a need for repetition. To put it mildly, it was a cluster. Then there was my tendency to stay on books for too long. In what's close to 10 years, I have only written 5 manuscripts, and that's almost 2 years for each manuscript. They were all 500 pages or more than that. This introduced two problems I was neither aware of and was equipped to deal with even if I was aware of. The first was a stagnation. As a new writer, it's best to write lots of projects, seek feedback, and repeat that cycle of quick and improvement rather than few projects that are very, very long. Your goal as someone new to writing should be to get as much feedback as you can. Committing to a large manuscript limits your ability to get that valuable feedback, and as a result, I suffered from stagnation. Each subsequent book had the same problems as the previous. What I should have done was commit to a smaller manuscript, somewhere between 60 to 100,000 words, and just improve incrementally every 4 or 5 months when I finish those manuscripts. In a year, I would have improved substantially. Actually, I would have improved enough to consider my writing just a year earlier as official crap. This one was actually worse than only seeking feedback from my family members. Let's entertain the idea one of those manuscripts was worthy of publication. How is a nobody with no connections and an unknown name was going to strike a publication deal for a book that is over 500 pages? Look, Brandon Sanderson can help me out here. I sat down and said, I'm going to write the biggest, baddest book ever, right? I am t they're rejecting me. They say my books are too long. I'm going to write one longer. Right? I'm going to write the book that I want to write that no one's ever going to want to publish. And that was The Way of Kings. That was book number 13. Um, that was the book where I'm like, no one wants this. I will make this book that is only for me and is like the most ambitious thing. Um, and then after I finished it, I got the call, the launcher was sold. <coughs> Funny story. I then sent Way of Kings because my edit, Moshe, he's like, I love Elantris. What are you working on now? I'm like, well, it's a 400,000 word epic fantasy. He's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You're ambitious, and he repeated that phrase and has many times through my career. He's like, well, I'll look at it, and I sent it to him, and he called back terrified. He's like, 
can we cut this? I'm like, well, it doesn't really feel like it has a good cutting point. He's like, yeah, this is, I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around this and things. He was really scared that I, that was, what, because the thing you got to understand why he was so scared is that the larger the book gets, the less the publisher makes off of it. Um, because like a, 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 a book that, let's say it's 400,000 words, they might charge $2 more than the book that's 200,000 words, but the printing cost is double, the editorial cost is double, everything is double, but people don't pay proratedly in their mind for, uh, for entertainment. The odds of publishing of a 500-page manuscript for your first book are very, very dim. So dim that you can actually count the number of people who have done it. Survivorship bias refers to the logical error of concentrating on the people that make it past some selection process and overlooking those that do not. Simply put, I was way up my ass. This video might come across as me bashing fanfiction, but it honestly is not. It's me trying to rectify the mistakes I made and ensuring more people do not fall into the same hole I did. Please subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. Have a nice day. God bless you.